Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new battery from Watt Cycle. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right, right on top we have some post bolts and a user's manual and then we have the battery. All right, and what we have is the Watt Cycle 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate mini battery. And this thing is pretty small. Let's go ahead and compare it to a regular size battery. Okay, and as you can see, there is a big difference between the mini and the regular, I believe it's a group 31 standard size battery. The mini is eight and a half inches long uh, about eight and a half inches tall and the depth is right around six inches and it looks like the uh, the the length of a standard battery is 12 and a half inches long so you're looking at, you're looking at a reduction of four inches that's that's crazy uh, the width like I said it's six inches it's six inches deep the standard battery is about six and a half inches deep and the height like I said before, it's about eight and a half and your standard battery is about eight and three quarters. So you're looking at a lot smaller of a form factor when it comes to the mini, but you're getting the same amount of energy. Let's uh, now compare the weight. The, the weight of a standard battery is 29.1 pounds and the weight of the mini is 21.7 pounds. So you're looking at a reduction of uh, what, over seven pounds right there, uh, about seven and a half. Even though these minis have the same amount of energy, they are really nice when it comes to portability and just the amount of space that they'll take up in your RV or even in your house. Okay, with every battery that you receive, you always wanna check the voltage to make sure that, well, it's working properly and that they've been storing it and shipping it at a proper level. I always say between 13.1 and 13.2, but my last couple of reviews, I've gotten a 13 and a 13.3, which are both acceptable but I always like that sweet range of 13.1 to 13.2. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, and the voltage is 13.18, that is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna show you the manual on all of the BMS protections and warnings and also the battery parameters. Uh, you can just pause it if you wanna look into it. So there is that page right there for the BMS parameters. And then there's that page for the uh, battery parameters. So that way I'm not just talking all about it. But a, a couple of key points I do want to make is that this thing says that it can discharge up to 300 amps. That is the max. It says plus or minus 50 amps. So we're going to try to pull 350 amps out of this to see what happens, to see if it will actually trigger um, an over amperage protection event through the BMS. Um, we're also going to do a capacity test and we're going to do a um, see if it has cold charging temperature protection. So let's go ahead and charge this up and then we are going to do a capacity test. Okay, the capacity test is done for the watt cycle battery. So let's see what we got. And what we have is 105.15 amp hours of capacity. That gives us 1268.74 watt hours. This test took 8 hours and 42 minutes. So I'm gonna charge this battery back up and then we're gonna do a high amperage test to make sure that it is safe under high, high loads. All right, well, we are ready for our high amperage testing. Um, what I have is the watt cycle battery connected to a 5,000 watt 12 volt inverter. I also have uh, my timer. And then what I have connected to the inverter is a 500 watt heater, uh, a griddler, which is, uh, It'll pump out about 1100 watts and then I have my new wave which can also pump out about 1300 watts. So what we're going to do first is try to do 100, 100 amps of discharge for 5 minutes and we'll just make sure that the battery doesn't have any issues. So let's start that now. Alright, we got our new wave on. Let's start our timer. Okay, timer set. Heater's on. And we are pulling right at 94 amps. All right, I've added a small 200 watt heater right there. And so now our amperage, it's, it's trailing back down. It went all the way up to about 122. 
but it's going back down. It's 100, yeah, it's going down. It'll probably settle out about 115 amps. And the voltage of the battery right now is 12.88. So it is holding steady just fine. Okay, so we're gonna wait about five minutes and then we're gonna make sure that everything is looking good. All right, well, it has been over five minutes now and we have been pushing 116 amps. Uh, the battery voltage is still at 12.86. That battery did the five minute test at over 100 amps flawlessly. So what we're gonna pull off next is we're gonna turn everything on, on high and see if the battery will shut off or if it will just continue to run. Okay, so unfortunately the sound went out on my microphone, but here I am turning everything on. And now I will zoom in and you can see that we are pulling right around 300 amps. And if you see the voltage of the battery, it was at like 12.09, so it's dropped quite a bit. And then here you can see that I waited about a minute and uh, the battery shut itself off. So it actually did do the over amperage protection after about one minute. And that is exactly what your battery should do. So perfect job. And now with that test done, we're going to go ahead and test it by throwing it in the freezer to make sure we have cold temperature charging protection. All right, well, the watt cycle 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery is nice and frozen. It's been in my freezer for 24 hours, and that is plenty of time to make sure that it is below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really the point of where you don't want your charger to charge. Now, I'm, I think it was in the documentation that this said that it wouldn't trigger until it was a bit lower. So, this might fail, which is going to be unfortunate. Uh, with this charger, I got a lit time 20 amp charger. Um, you can see that the green light is flashing. That just means it's on standby. Uh, when it's charging, it will turn a solid red. And if there's a fault of any kind, it will start flashing red. And then when it's fully charged, it will be a solid green. Uh, I'm telling you all that because what will happen if this has cold temperature charging protection, uh, when I connect it, it will go to a solid red for about two to three seconds, and then it will switch over to a solid green. And that means that the BMS has shut the charger off, or it shut the BMS off due to the protection. So let's go ahead and try it now. All right, connecting the negative. There we go. Perfect. That is exactly what it should do. That means this battery does have cold temperature charging protection. All right, well this watt cycle 12 volt, 100 amp hour and lithium iron phosphate battery, it passed all the tests. Um, it, it, Passed the capacity, I think it gave us like 105, I think. Um, it passed the cold temperature charging protection. Um, <coughs> it also passed the over amperage protection. I, you know, I boosted it up to 300 amps and it did shut it off after about 30 to 45 seconds, which is, which is just fine with me. Um, and it also, it can run on 100 amps, you know, for well over five minutes with absolutely no problem. Um, it is a basic battery. It does not have Bluetooth capability or anything like that. So it's not a smart battery. So if you're just looking for pure capacity in a very small form factor, uh, this is something you should probably look at. So if you have any questions about the uh, watt cycle battery, please let me uh, know in the comments. Um, I'll have a link to this in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.